So I did a whole video on the seven different types of men to avoid while dating. And it was only fair that I came and gave y'all a list of the types of women to avoid dating too. And hold on ladies, before you click off of this video, you want to stick around because you need to make sure that you're not one of the women that I'm talking about. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Keeping It Real with Keandra. I am your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, Keandra Jackson. Now, look, we talk so much about the different types of men to avoid dating. These men ain't shh. These men, men, men. And nobody's getting on the women. Because listen, from what I've seen and from the couples and the people that I have worked with on an individual level too, the women are just as raggedy as the men. So I'm going to be brave and I'm going to be bold and I'm going to break down the seven different types of women that you should avoid while dating. Now, of course, this list isn't exhaustive and I could have added a whole bunch more, but these are the ones that I want to give to y'all today. And before we get into it, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, stay connected, and let me know if you've ever dated any of these types of women, because I need to know in the comment section. And ladies, you need to make sure you're not on this list, because if you are, it's going to be a oop, oops situation. The first type of woman that you should avoid while dating is the drama queen. Now this chick is all about conflict. She's all about drama. She allows things to escalate and go from zero to a hundred real quick, real quick. She's always surrounded by people who also are about the drama. She does not understand peace. Let me say that again. Men, she does not understand stability, peace, chillness. There's always something going on with her with somebody else. Now, this is twofold, right? Because she could always have drama with you, starting arguments starting issues, you know, escalating things, turning little small things into something that's big and monstrous. That could be the thing. But I also want you to be aware and be cautious of how she interacts with those around her, how she interacts with her friends. Is there always some type of drama? Is she always coming back to you talking about Tyrone? I got into an argument with my homegirl because she said, and then we start fighting and then it, it, it's is that the energy? <laughs> is she always talking about something that happens at her family function? Girl, me and so-and-so got into a physical fight and me and so-and-so got into a disagreement. There's just always chaos around her. If there is, then this is a drama queen and she is someone that is not going to bring you peace stability, level-headedness, stableness. It's always going to be something chaotic all the time. And what I learned from these type of women and what I know about these type of women is that they thrive off of those environments, right? If it's not something cracking, if it's not something too turned up and it's just chill and peaceful, they feel uncomfortable because that's not their normal playground, right? And so being around these types of women and dating these women, are, it's going to suck your peace out. It's going to suck your joy out. And it may be cute and a little bit like, oh yeah, she always got something going on. But long-term, mm -mm. long-term, this is not somebody that you want to stick around. The second type of woman that you should avoid while dating is the high maintenance woman. Now, let me break this one down because this is a little bit twofold. So when we think of high maintenance, we often think of expensive clothes, expensive shoes, or at least that's what society tells us. She likes trips, getting her nails done, her hair done. She likes watches and she likes, you know, the finer things and trips and, you know, all of the finer things in life. And it's just like, whoa, this woman seems to be quote unquote expensive. That's kind of partially, but not really about what I'm talking about now. Now, listen, man, let's, while we're here, let me break it down to you. If you are finding that a woman likes finer things in life, she wants a particular lifestyle, she likes to look good, nice clothes, shoes, bags, hair done, nails done, makeup. She likes to look good and you, and you know that you cannot financially afford to keep up with her lifestyle. Don't bash that woman. It just means that she is not the type of woman that is suitable for you, your lifestyle, and your pocketbook. Because trust and believe there are men out there who can afford certain types of women, who wants to get women's hair done, nails done, 
feet done, watches, jewelry, makeup. They want their woman to look good and they can afford that type of lifestyle. So if you want to label and put, oh, she's just high maintenance on a woman, just say you can't afford her. <laughs> just say she's out of my price range and that's perfectly fine. And what you do from there is leave that woman alone. You do not go and try to create a lifestyle that you cannot sustain long term because trust and believe <laughs> is not going to work. She's going to find out that you might not be where you want to be or need to be financially or you might be broke and it's not going to work for her. Right. You probably would label her or call her a gold digger or whatever, but that's just not the case. There's levels to dating. There's levels to who you can <laughs> who you can try to be with and, and you just need to stick to your own playing field. Now, the second part of this high maintenance conversation, not high maintenance when it comes to material things, but it's high maintenance when it comes to other areas. She is high maintenance in regards to always wanting and craving attention, always wanting to be up under you, always craving love and affection on a high level or an excessive level and craving like extravagant expressions of love you know like if you're in public and you don't hold her hand she's like well what's wrong with you like why why you don't love me no more what's up you know like just extra she just needs that extra confirmation she needs that extra validation that you are hers she is yours and that you want to be with her and all of those things we don't talk about that type of high maintenance enough so essentially this type of woman is going to put excessive unrealistic expectations and demands on you that you may not be able to meet or that feels very unrealistic for you so what happens is i talked about this in the other video that i'll link up here when i was talking about the different men to avoid dating but there are different types of relationship attachment styles and for this type of woman i do believe that she has more of an anxious attachment style, which means it's kind of like she needs that extra validation. She's fearful that you might leave her or whatever the case may be. And so this is something that you should be aware of. So if you don't know your own attachment style and you don't know your partner, not only do you need to figure it out, but I'll link that video so you can get a deeper understanding of what that looks like. So that's just something to be aware of as well. So high maintenance can be the material things, but it can also be emotionally high maintenance and demanding. And it's not necessarily in a healthy way, but it's excessive and overly done. The third type of woman to avoid while dating is the entitlement pillow princess. This is the woman that is really for real, for real high maintenance. She's not just liking the finer things in life, but she feels like she's entitled to those. Like, no, you got to get my nails done. You got to get me the most expensive Birkin. You got to get me the jewelry and the makeup and the out. You have to take me on this trip because I am a princess and I deserve it. And it's all about me, 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 me. Run from this girl, okay? Not only is she going to drain your pocket, but she's going to drain you emotionally. And that is not a healthy aspect of any type of dating relationship. You want to feel like there's reciprocity. I always talk about that reciprocity piece, y'all. You want to feel like it's two ways, you know? I think we have this ideology in our society where women feel like they're the prize, they're the one that, you know, is... <laughs> got to get all of the things and the man is just supposed to cater to her and only her at all times or any given time. No, no, boo boo. <laughs> That's not the case. Reciprocity means it goes both ways. You guys are both surprised. He's just amazing as you are. You're just amazing as he is. Like it's about the give and the take, but this type of woman doesn't feel that way. She basically feels like you should treat her like royalty. Go ahead and lay out the red carpet for her. Play the trumpets. Have the rose petals. I just think of like coming to America, you know, everywhere Eddie Murphy will put, they will put the roses out for him and lay out the car. Like this is what this woman is expecting. And if she doesn't receive that, she feels like she's not worthy. She feels like she's not able to operate at her highest level. And it's like, no girl, you just trying to get something that you're not even supposed to get. You're just trying to get something that you're not even necessarily entitled to, that you earn, that you work for, or that even a man wants to do for you organically just because you're being a good woman. This is going to make y'all men feel like, okay, 
let me run from her because she's not going to have any type of empathy. She's not going to put herself in your shoes. She doesn't care if you got the money or not, the time or not. It's just about me, me, me. And to be honest with you, this is a recipe for a disaster. The fourth type of woman to avoid while dating is the unhealed woman. This is a woman who has not worked on her ish. This is a woman that has not been to therapy yet. This is a woman that has open wounds from a previous relationship, not even romantic. It could be from mama, daddy, any type of issues or any type of trauma or drama that she hasn't dealt with in her life. And so this type of woman is going to bleed all over you, not literally, but bleed all over you, meaning whatever issues that she has that are unhealed, they're going to billow over into the relationship. And then those issues are going to naturally try to become your issues. And you're going to be like, wait, what? I, I never even dealt with this before. Or why is this a thing in my life now? It's because she's bringing that type of quote unquote baggage into the relationship. This isn't a person or the type of person that I would even entertain if I was one of y'all because it is just going to be, again, a recipe for a disaster because she has some unhealed areas that are not going to be okay when it comes to trying to be in a romantic relationship or even just dating you. So she needs to go back to square one, work through her ish. If we're talking about baggage in the form, in the form of luggage, we are going to unzip her luggage, honey. We are going to open it up and start pulling out all of those different mommy wounds, daddy wounds, previous relationships, cheating, emotional unavailability, guilt, shame, whatever she is dealing with and start dealing with those one-on-one. -on -one. Now, I do believe that some of us can, you know, be fully 1000% healed from something. Absolutely believe that that is the case. But a lot of us understand that healing is a journey, right? And so even because healing is a journey, you won't unpack all of those and be perfectly a thousand percent well at all times. The goal is to make sure that you're dealing with it as much as possible, unpacking it, dealing with it, talking about it with the professional, working through your ish to the point where you're not triggered and you're going to have adverse effects or reactions to the thing that triggered you. OK, so she may be working on it and that's a good sign. If she's working on it and she's showing progress, men, this is a woman that, you know, who understands personal growth, who understands ambition, who understands um, going to the next level, who understands the importance of being healed, who understands why it's necessary for her to heal for herself, not just so she can be with you. Right. She wants to be a full, complete whole individual and you can't be mad at someone who's willing to do the work so if she's willing to do the work I still wouldn't date her but <laughs> she wouldn't be somebody that I would completely rule out maybe this is a situation where once she's healed or healing and getting to a better place you can spin the block on her and try to date her at a later time the fifth type of woman that you should avoid dating is the possessive and jealous woman. Now, I forgot to tell y'all that I'm going to add an extra bonus in here. It's not going to be seven of these. It's going to be eight. But for this one, she's exhibiting controlling behaviors. And I talked about this in my other video when I broke down the different men, when I talked about the controlling man. But she's also basically a controlling woman. She controls where you go who you see, what you wear, what you eat, how you look in. She wants to know everything and control every aspect of that, right? And so I know for a fact that no man wants to be controlled. <laughs> like, first of all, no person wants to be controlled in general, whether you are a man or a woman, but essentially no man wants to be controlled. And we're talking about control to the extreme and not necessarily a man who's trying to lead, right? Because that's different. Like a man leading a woman, leading the relationship, marriage, whatever, is very different than him trying to control every aspect of her, right? But this woman exhibits that controlling behavior. And if she doesn't get her way, it's a problem. And we're going to talk about that in a little while as well. But for this woman, she's going to try to isolate you from your family, from your friends. She's only going to want you to herself and she's also going to monitor your activities okay like this is the type of crazy woman who's like 
it took you 8.2 miles to get to work, but I checked your, your meter in your car and you went 9.7 miles. Where did you go for that extra one point? Like this is that type of woman. And it's so scary because not only will she monitor your activity, but she's not going to trust you. Okay, she's gonna be like, Oh, how many likes did you put on? How many emojis did you put on? You was on social media, I seen you liking and in that girl. That is the type of woman that she is. She's jealous, she's possessive. But essentially, what she is is a scared little girl. She's so nervous that she's not good enough that you're gonna to have to go and sneak to be with somebody else that you're going to have to go out and cheat because she's inadequate, right? And so that's really the flip side of this jealousy and the possessiveness is just a wounded, unhealed, like we just talked about, little girl who's yearning and longing for that affection and that attention in a healthy manner that she never got. So she acts out in different ways. And so this is a type of woman that I would definitely avoid dating because jealousy and possessiveness can get to a place where it is controlling and psychotic. OK, I almost think of like those shows. I don't know if y'all watch like true crime shows where like the women kill the men and like killer couples and you know excessive weird things because of jealousy like fatal attraction type energy that's what this one's giving that's what this one's giving the sixth type of woman that you should avoid while dating is the financial opportunist i'm gonna say that one again the financial opportunist this is the woman that's only going on dates with you because of that bread, because of that cheddar, because of what you're able to do and provide for her. She's only going on dates with you because she's lonely. She's only going on dates with you because she's hungry and she knows that you're going to take her to Mastro's or some expensive restaurant and she can have a good meal on your dime. Like this is the type of woman who is just waiting for the opportunity for you to kick her some money to get her nails done, her hair done, her shoes, bags, clothes, makeup, whatever. Like she's just waiting for that opportunity to suck you dry. This isn't one of those instances where it's just like, oh, okay, you need something or you're down and out. So let me, you know, kick you a little bit of bread or this is what you might need to get to the week you need gas money or whatever. This is someone who doesn't necessarily need it because she can probably take care of her own or at least maintain her own lifestyle, but she wants you to do it for her anyway. And the sad part about it is that she probably doesn't want to be with you fully anyway. She's just being with you for what you can give her financially. She's all about the material benefits. She's not trying to connect with you emotionally, have a relationship with you long term. She's just trying to milk you dry for what you can give her in this season. And nine times out of 10, once she gets whatever her goal is, whatever she desires, she's going to move on to the next fool who will be willing to perpetrate and guys y'all need to stop getting so caught up on a woman's physical appearance and their looks i know there's some women who's bad like her body's banging face card on 10 she looks great she takes care of herself all of those things but there's so much more to a woman than just her physical qualities and oftentimes y'all get so blinded by that and y'all mishandle the woman because y'all don't pay attention to the red flags which is dang is she a nice person is she connected spiritually what's up like what are those internal things that you need to be aware of and not just so caught up on the fact that she has a nice body that she has a nice curve or that you even feel like you just want to have sex with her like get deeper go deeper because those things are very superficial you can connect with somebody or have an attachment with someone or even sleep with someone and they don't do more for you than that let's be real right and so women especially women who are about that life okay they can do the same thing i know tons of women who have flipped the script and they are literally out here like low-key being a man like hey yo i went i had sex with old boy and i don't even care like i'm moving on to the next one i got what i needed next you know like they don't have the emotional connection and the emotional desire to want to connect with people they just want to get what they can get and move on so be aware of those things that women play just as many games as men can, and I don't want you to get played. 
So the seventh type of woman that you should avoid while dating, and then I'll get to the bonus number eight, is the manipulative woman. And this woman is very different than the ones that we've talked about because she doesn't just want to control or influence you, but she uses certain tactics to take you to a deeper level to make you feel guilt and shame and feel bad about it, right? She's just literally trying to connive. She's trying to use deceit. She is trying to blackmail you, emotionally blackmail you to feeling bad and sorry for her. And she uses those tactics on a regular basis. Essentially, she's just being the victim or playing the victim to get whatever it is that she wants. And she uses like guilt and shame and wanting that level of sympathy from you to kind of control you. I know we've all seen stories and movies where you know the woman might try to pretend like she's crying or emotionally distraught that her you know boyfriend or whatever is going out with his male friends or to a strip club or something and she don't want him to go and she's just like well you don't love me anymore why do you want to go out why do you want to you know make it rain on some woes <laughs> And now the, the boyfriend is feeling bad. Like, you right. I do love you. I'm going to stay home. Like, she's being manipulative and deceitful to get her way. And that is not okay. Manipulation is not. This goes back to, like, the narcissistic thing that I broke down in another video. Manipulative behavior isn't healthy, right? And she needs to figure out and explore why she's even being that way to begin with. And why are you feeling like you have to date and be with somebody that you have to manipulate in the first place? Why do I need to use deceit and emotionally blackmail you to get you to love me and to stay home? What? <laughs> Child, this is ridiculous. So men, if she is trying to manipulate you and you see this as a pattern, and I'm not talking about a woman who has real tears because, you know, we are emotional beings and, you know, we will cry. Some of us will cry at the drop of a diamond. I and mean, I don't want you to think that just because a woman might cry or she might share, you know, a different perspective about something that you're doing that she's trying to manipulate you. That's not the case. I'm talking about patterns over time and you're consistently seeing her do the same thing. All she is doing is trying to get you to do what she wants you to do. And there is no healthy exchange coming from that. Another thing, one last thing before I move on, she's never, this manipulator chick is never going to take responsibility for her action. She has a lot of those narcissistic personality um, tendencies. And I, I break down the difference between a person, narcissistic personality disorder and narcissistic traits. In that other video, I'm not going to redo it in this one, but just know that there's a difference and we have been misusing it and overusing narcissism in our society for a very long time and I'm tired of it. But nevertheless, this person will not take responsibility for her actions and she's always probably going to try to blame you even when she's the one that's wrong. So here's the bonus. Number eight is the bonus of the eighth type of woman that you should avoid while dating and she is the unreliable flake. Let me tell y'all something, men. For women who really want to be with you, who really want to see this go somewhere, they are going to be consistent. They are going to text you. They're going to call you. They're going to want to see you. They're going to want to pop up. They are going to want to get to know you on a deeper level. They're going to do all of those things. Now, a woman who does not want to really get to know you or she may not even like you like that, because that's the real thing, right? She may not even rock with you like that. But if she is doing <laughs> those things, I can guarantee that she is canceling plans. She is not being consistent. She's being super late to things on purpose. She fails to follow through on her word. You know, over here on my channel, we do things with excellence and integrity, right? Like we're keeping our word and doing what we say we're going to do. When we say we're going to do it, how we say we're going to do it. If she does not have those qualities, then she's just basically an unreliable flake. And it gets to the point where it's, she's so unreliable where she is just basically disrespecting you, right? And you're letting it go on. <laughs> like, I don't care. Again, I don't care how fine she is. Do not let these women run over you and disrespect you. Allow yourself to have boundaries, to have standards, to have all of those things because baby, this goes two ways. So don't get so caught up on, dang, she bad. I don't know if I'm ever going to get another woman like her, that you just allow her to manipulate you, that you allow her to be inconsistent, that you allow her to, to 
do all the things and just run over you. Like, that's not okay. Women do not respect men long term that they can run over. But I've never seen a woman who just enjoys a man being super passive. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole masculine, feminine energy, but I do believe that women enjoy a man who can be a man, who knows how to lead and not control, right? And who knows how to be assertive and not aggressive. Like these are different words and things that you need to be aware of. Like I will happily yield to a man who's going to lead me in an assertive manner and who's not going to be passive and just let me run over him or is not going to be aggressive and abusive and go to the extreme, right? Like there is harmony, because y'all know that's my word. There's harmony and balance all up in that thing that has to be acknowledged. Here's my final thoughts on this, y'all. Relationships and dating is very, very tricky. And while I could have made this list super exhaustive and added a million and one different things, I hope some of the things that I broke down in this video was helpful to you as a man. Now look, Take this video and share it with your homeboys. Take this video and share it to some women because it's not just the men who need to hear this advice and stay away from these type of women. It's also the women who need to not be these types of women, right? In dating situations. So if you got a homegirl or a homeboy or friends or whoever who needs this video, please feel free to share. Again, this list is not meant to be definitive. Like if you're seeing anything from this list, have a conversation explore, communicate, get your questions answered, and then you can make an informed decision from there. So thank you so much for watching another episode of Keeping It Real with Keandra, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned. Bye.